All righty, welcome back. CYSA practice exam number 19. Number 19 to help you pass your CYSA exam. That's our goal for today. We're going to jump right in. We're going to try and get these videos under 20 minutes. I, I feel like we're just going too long on these videos. I need to learn how to shut up and move on. We're going to do that today. You are testing a web application for vulnerabilities using a fuzzing tool. After returning the fuzzing process, uh, excuse me, after running the fuzzing process, you receive the following. What action should you take based on this output? We have some information there. Uh, looks like an SQL syntax error at line 42. Possible SQL detection. Uh, an endpoint. What do you think? What do you think we should do on this one? Which which of these are going to kind of put you in, put you in your right frame of mind? Which one is going to be the correct answer? We're starting out pretty heavy duty today. Uh, when we look at this. Uh, all right, let's uh, let's answer this question. If you need more time, of course, you can pause that video. You're testing a web application for vulnerabilities using a fuzzing tool. If you remember a fuzzy tool, it's just going to throw a bunch of garbage at it and see what kind of pops up. That's what a fuzzing tool does. After running the fuzzing process, you receive the following. What action should you take based on this output? Let's start with A. Deploy a web application firewall to block SQL injection attempts. Um, possibly. Possibly. I mean, if you think about it, and we have an SQL uh, attempt on there, then a web application firewall could technically, theoretically help stop that. We always use that as a preliminary method when we find something. And so this could be a good answer. It really could. Uh, I don't like to guess right off the bat though. Let's move on. Remove the entire user login feature to prevent future attacks. Wait, what? Why in the world would we ever remove the login feature. Are we just going to let everybody just go in? I don't. I don't think so. I think it's trying to play on that alert possible in SQL injection detected on endpoint user login. Um, no, that's that's not something we're going to do. C. Ignore the alert since it is likely a false positive. Um, usually, when we get feedback from a tool, it's usually not a false positive. We would have to do some more testing uh, before we identified it as a possible false positive or there would be need to, be, need to be something in the alert that kind of uh, provided us with, with something that didn't make a lot of sense. For instance, maybe if you had SQL and syntax error on line 42, but the the information didn't actually show an SQL syntax error. In this case, we actually see it uh, in the information, right? That, uh, that hyphen, or I'm sorry, that uh, apostrophe, and then or one equals one. That is, that is like SQL written all over it. So C, eh, I don't think so. Uh, D, update the web application to validate and sanitize user inputs. Ooh, another great answer. And so it really comes between A and D. A and D, two good answers. Typical of CompTIA, they give you two really good answers. Both could be properly, could be correct, uh, but only one is going to be more correct. One, only one. Uh, I'm going to give you a second. Between A and D, which one? Which one? I'll give you about five seconds on this one. Uh, if you said A... Deploy a web application firewall. A is always the second best answer. Web application firewalls are usually not the best answer. Usually they're the second best answer because we really don't want it as our primary control feature. And so by updating the web application to validate, validate to make sure there's actually a problem and then sanitize user inputs to stop the attack from being able to occur, that would be our best option. Uh, and so D, D is gonna be a correct answer on this one. If you got it right, awesome. Give yourself a crisp high five. If not, did you learn something? That's all we ask. All right, question number two. A security analyst receives the following alert from a DLP. Do you remember what a DLP is? What is the most appropriate next step? And we can see that alert. Uh, looks like an XLX file, uh, destination address, and then user, and the action was blocked. What do you think on this one? What do you think? Hmm. We have some, some good information here. Do you remember what a DLP is? Well, we're gonna tell you in a minute, but what is your answer? What's your answer? All right, pause the video if you need more time. Security analyst receives the following alert from a data loss prevention. What is the most appropriate next step? We see unauthorized file transfer detected. Uh, employee data, it looks like an XLS form. Destination IP address, so still in our network, but it was unauthorized. Uh, and so typical, could be an insider threat, could be someone who gotten access to the computer system. Uh, we see the user was J Doe, probably John Doe or Jane Doe, and the action was blocked. Uh, so what are we gonna do about it? Add the IP address to the firewall block list. I no, it's an internal IP address. If we add it to our block list, 
that's an issue. So why why would we do that? Uh, obviously, private IP address internal to our network, uh, not something we would do. Uh, B, contact the user and inform them to stop transferring files. Hey, uh, J. Doe, is this J. Joe? Hey, I listen. Um, I need you to I need you to knock it off, man. You don't have a permission. Why Why are you trying to do that? Uh, no. I mean, we would definitely talk to him, but it definitely wouldn't be my primary. Wouldn't be my most appropriate next step. Um. That would probably go on the investigation, and they probably could come back and say, I didn't try and do that. Uh, okay, so B, I think we throw that one out the window. That leaves C and D. That leaves C and D as our possible answers. Possible answers of C and D. Uh, if you guessed A or B, take another guess. Take another crack at it. What do you think uh, between C and D? All right, C, investigate the user's activity log for potential insider threats. I like that answer. I think I just stated that as a possible answer. Uh, D, disable the user's account immediately to prevent further access. Whoa, so good answers on both sides. Uh, but which one's better? Which one would be the next step? What would we want to do first? What would be the immediate action we wanted to, to carry out if we saw something like this in our file? Uh, if you guessed C, you would be correct. Absolutely, we're gonna investigate. We're gonna investigate. It could be that, because we're only seeing one attempt, right? That's all the log's showing us. It could be that they just, they just thought they had access. It could be that their boss told them, hey, go get this file, and they thought they had a legitimate reason for it. Could be that they're supposed to have access to it, but they don't, and so we need to grant them access. So why would we disable the user's account immediately? Um, there's no reason for that. We need to investigate further. We don't just go around you know, turning off account access without doing a little bit of investigation, because a lot of times, especially inside of our internal network, they say, there's a reason for it. There's a reason for it, and so in this case, C would be our correct answer. All right, question number three. You're using Kaku Sandbox to analyze a suspicious file. After running the analysis, you'll receive the following. Based on the report, which action should you prioritize? A lot of information there. We see a malware sample, uh, behavior analysis, modifies registration keys. We see the malicious IP. We see drops additional payload, trojan.dll, uh, and then detected ransomware behavior. So a lot going on with that report that Cuckoo Sandbox sent to us. Uh, but what's the answer? What are we trying to do? Based on the report, which action should we prioritize? What should we do immediately? What do you think? What, what should we do? Uh, all right. Give you a couple seconds to answer this one before we move on. Really trying to make these videos a little bit shorter. Really trying not to run on. I know it's difficult for me sometimes. Uh, all right, let's start. Uh, you need more time? Of course, pause that video. We can block the IP address 18599132422 on the firewall network. I like this answer. I really do. Because we're seeing a malicious IP. It should be blocked. If we know there's a malicious IP, we should definitely block it. Uh, I'm going to put that on the maybe side because I like to read all the answers. Uh, delete the registry keys. Which, <laughs> no, we're not, we're not deleting the registry keys. We're not doing that. I'm sorry. I'm laughing because I'm like, what? 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 No. No, we're not going to do that. Uh, C, re-image the infected systems immediately. Should we re-image those systems? I like this answer too. Uh, I do, because if we have if we have ransomware on those machines, uh, we want to we want to stop it in its track, right? So would re-imaging stop it in this track? Um, yeah, I think I think it would. Uh, but which one do we, we want to block it first or we want to re-image first? Uh, both are good answers. So A and C, A and C, both good answers. Uh, D, run all full antivirus scan on all connected systems. Uh, okay, so here's the thing, right? Antivirus probably already saw it. Uh, that's probably why we submitted the file in, in the first place. So technically, I just don't see it. And if it didn't catch it, then running it again is not going to solve anything. And so D doesn't really make a lot of sense. It really comes between A and C. Do we want to block the IP address immediately on the firewall, or do we want to re-image the infected systems? Which one do we want to do first? Which one should we prioritize in our network? Because I got to tell you, uh, I have a lot of IT and cyber people here, and I know what they would do first, uh, but I also know what the book says. And so what's the book say? And this is where people that work in the field have the hardest problem, right? What does the book say? Not what you would do first in the real world. What does the book say you should do first? And there's there's the difference right there. And I know I know some people in the industry are like looking at me like, what? Hold on here. Uh, if you said, see, re-image the infected systems immediately, by the book, that's the right answer. It's going to be C. It's going to be C. Why not block the IP address immediately? Uh, because we need to fix the issue first. I got to tell you, in the real world, we probably block that IP address first. I'm going to be honest with you. But book, 
Reimage. Reimage. That's what we're going to do first. C is going to be a correct answer again with the C. Moving on. Question number four. A security researcher participating in a bug bounty program submits a report detailing a remote code execution vulnerability. That's a problem. Uh, the submitted POC exploit includes what, uh, I, I guess, it includes the following, right? Uh, what is the primary reason this vulnerability needs remediate, uh, needs immediate patching? Oh my gosh, I cannot talk today. Uh, what do we think? What do we think on this one? We have that curl exposed. We see example, tack D, file. And here's the, here's the weird part, right? You could look at this and you you could probably figure out what it's trying to do without actually understanding scripting. And, and remember, CYSA does not require you to be a master scripter. They don't require you to actually understand programming at a detailed level, but you should be able to read this. This is not, this is not an overly difficult um, script in my personal opinion. It's, it's something you should be able to read. And if you can't, uh, I would take, I would take an hour or two and go, go learn it, go learn it. Cause you quite possibly could learn something or quite possibly could see something like this on your exam. All right, let's deal with this one. A security researcher participating in a bug bounty program submits a report detailing remote code execution vulnerability. The submitted POC exploit what is the primary reason this vulnerability needs immediate patching? Option A, it allows privilege escalation on the web server. Does it? Does it allow privilege escalation based on what we're seeing here? Is that a thing? I, I'm looking at the I'm looking at the script and that is a possibility, right? Uh, B, it could be used to bypass the WAF, the web application firewall. Could it though? I'm not really seeing anything on here. We see curl. We see attack x post example.com looks like a, a web page. We see attack d file equals payload.sh. Then we see that ch mod for executable uh, payload and then payload.sh. Uh, I don't see anything with the web application firewall. I don't, not right off the bat. So I'm gonna, uh, I mean, it is possible, right? It's definitely, it's definitely possible, uh, but it is the best answer. Uh, I'm gonna say, is it better than A? I would say no. I would say no. All right, C, and enables the attacker to execute arbitrary commands on the server. Ooh, another good answer, because it does mention remote code execution uh, in the question, but does it enable the attacker to execute arbitrary commands based on what we're seeing in this script? Hmm, uh, I would say that's a really good answer. Does it beat out A? Does it allow privilege escalation? I, I mean, that's a good question. It's between A and C so far. And then D, the, it results in data leakage on the server. Uh, it may occur. It may. Uh, I mean, anytime you're talking about remote code execution, there is a possibility of data leakage, but I like A and C better. I really do. So it's really between A and C. What are we looking at here? Between A and C, I'll give you a few seconds. If you guess B or D, take another gander at it. It's between A and C. Take another guess. What do you think? Well, if you said A, it allows privilege escalation on the web server. Unfortunately, you'd be incorrect. Uh, C is actually the better answer. Enables attackers to execute arbitrary commands on the server. That is the entire thing of remote code execution. Matter of fact, you didn't even need to read the script. You could have answered this question just ignoring the script. Script is almost there to sidetrack you. Uh, be aware of that when you're taking your CompTIA exams, but the answer is actually C. You didn't even need to know how to read the script. Now, I want to point out, I would definitely go learn how to read that. If you didn't understand this, if you didn't understand this right here, go learn it. You really, you really should for CYSA. All right, let's see. All right, question number five, our last question. Uh, after applying a recent patch to a production server, a security analyst receives multiple alerts like the one below. Which of the following is the most likely cause of the issue? We can see service unreachable on the web server, 503 service unavailable, uh, patch applied, we see a patch number, and then the timestamp associated with it. Hmm, what do you think on this one? What do you think? You know, I feel like I'm doing really good on time. Then I looked at the time and I'm like, really? Still at 15 minutes so far. And we're probably going to hit 18. That's okay. That's all right. Let's answer this one. If you need more time, of course, pause that video. After applying a recent patch to a production server, a, a security analyst receives multiple alerts like the one below. Which of the following is most likely the cause of the issue? Let's start with A. Uh, the patch introduced a compatibility issue with existing services. Did it? Did the patch introduce a compatibility issue? I mean, we see the alert service unreachable. We see the web server. We see service unavailable. Uh, and we see when the patch was applied. That is a definite, that's definitely a contender. Definitely a contender, but it's the best answer. 
Uh, B, the server is undergoing a DDoS attack. Ooh. So we have service unreachable. From the web server, we see a 503 service unavailable. Uh, definite possible answer. Definite possible. It could be undergoing a DOS attack, a DDoS attack. Uh, and we see that because the service is unavailable and it's unreachable. So maybe. So A and B, really good answers on that one. C, the web server crashed due to an internal uh, misconfiguration. Uh, I mean, maybe, maybe, uh, but if it was a, if it was a internal misconfiguration, there would be a little bit more to it. If we read the question, uh, probably not, probably not. I mean, eh, probably not. I, I would go, it, it's likely not to be the issue. I, I mean, between the two, between the compatibility issue and the DDoS attack, I like both of those better than I like C. Uh, C is still a good answer. It really is. But it's, it, we don't see anything specific to the configuration changing in the question or the log. And so that kind of eliminates that answer. Uh, D, a firewall rule is blocking access to the web server. I don't think so. I don't think so. If, if we saw a firewall rule being a problem, uh, then we wouldn't have access to the server in the first place, right? And so we would see something else. We wouldn't see a 503 error code. We would see something else. So it's really between A and B on this one. A and B are our best answers on this one. Which one do you think? give you about 10 seconds to make up your mind before we move on. What do you think? Between A and B? Well, if you said B, the server is undergoing a DDoS attack, I would say stop jumping to the attacks. It's not. It's a, it's a compatibility issue. Why? Read the question. After applying a recent patch to a production server, we just applied the patch. We just applied the patch. And then we see 503 service unavailable. If we saw a DDoS attack, it would affect more than just a single web server, especially in this case. Uh, and, and, and it just leads us to believe that it's got to be a compatibility issue. Uh, that is going to be the best answer based on the question and based on the log. Uh, that's going to be our answer. It's going to be A. Uh, I hope you learned something. Uh, I hope you had a great time. And until next time, I'm Dr. K. We'll see you. Have a good one.